It's been five hours, and you guys still haven't given me a single thing I can give to the client. Wow, great job, guys, seriously. Great job. Mommy, are you done yet? If we don't get something going, your mommy and the rest of the people at the table will be bye-bye, like you. So go and play somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Seriously, considering the amount of money I pay you, you should be able to afford a babysitter. What do you have? I think it's just... Boring. What about you? Okay. I guess I'll ask you, do you have anything even remotely intelligent to share? Well, actually... Just close your notes and label this meeting pathetic because that's exactly what it was. Everybody get out. Floating stage under the stars. Hey, Dad. There she is. Hello, hello. Are you Amanda, okay? Amanda, you want to say hi to Grandpa? Hi, Grandpa. Hey, Amanda. Love you. <laughs> hey, Jess. I've just come back from the store. I've got loads of macaroni. I've got your favorite cheese. So why don't you scoop up Amanda, get in the car, come over here, and we'll have a fantastic meal. No, I'm not really hungry, Dad. And besides, we're going to pick up a pizza on the way home. Pizza? All right, Jess. What's happened? She didn't even give me a chance to present my idea, and... <sighs> oh, babe. Do you remember when your mother and I refused to get you a dog when you were a little girl? Yep, I remember, Dad. Well, hear me out. Your mother and I absolutely did not want a dog in the house. Not in a million years. But the next day, there was a little note on my desk in my office at home that said, family meeting, 8 p.m. And in case you forgot, that's what you organized when you were nine years old. You came all prepared, you had a one pager full of bullet points of why we should have a dog in the house. What's the point of the story, Dad? Well, the point of the story is, it's not about the paper. The paper didn't sell us on it. It was you. It was you, Jess, and your unshakable belief in yourself that this was the right thing to do. It was in the tone of your voice, the fire in your eyes. You had decided to stand up for what you believed in. And I think that's what you need to do now. You need to dig deep and find that nine-year-old girl again, because I know she's in there. And I think you do too. Thanks, Dad. That's what I'm here for. Amanda, want to say bye to Grandpa? Bye, Amanda. I love you. Love you, Dad. I love you too, Jess. Take care. Why don't you go play somewhere else? Okay. Hey. Do you want to go get some pizza and maybe some ice cream? I love you, Mom. Too. Okay, so whatever happens, if the client isn't giving us the amount of interest that we want, don't flinch. We have to project confidence no matter what happens. Okay? Mr. Bradley, thank you for your time. So, I've put in a significant amount of work into this concept for you today, and I know that you're going to appreciate it. It is outside the box. So 
If there's one thing that we've learned this year in the event industry is that we need to adapt. And we need to think quickly and seize opportunities. And most importantly, we need to innovate. So imagine a floating stage on the water where the best of the best perform with boats surrounding the stage anchored down with thousands of people enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the music, having an amazing time, all of which are socially distanced from one another. Okay, well, I see what you did there, and this is great. This has satisfied all the criteria we were looking for. You know what? Let's, uh, let's schedule a follow-up call and discuss this concept in greater detail. And we'll say this amazing concept, Jennifer. Well done. Well, rest assured we have your best interests at heart. I look forward to that phone call. We'll be in touch. Sounds good to me. Let's meet up next week. Okay. Are you serious? That was my idea, and you just stole it. <laughs> Jess, I wouldn't call it stealing an idea. I just borrowed it. Okay, it's my company, my ideas. You know, Jennifer, I've sat in countless meetings, and all you've ever done is belittle me and everyone else at this table. You've shown us no respect, and that speaks volumes about the person you really are. To add insult to injury, you keep presenting these ideas as yours, while we put in the long, hard hours and are busting our behinds to make something happen. The most sincere form of respect is actually listening to what another has to say. You've never done that, nor will you ever. Wow. Those are big words for a small junior secretary. That just costs you your job. Get out. Excuse me, but I'm still on the call and I just heard everything you said. As far as the associate who just got fired is concerned, I respect what you just did and I'd like to meet with you and discuss collaborating together. Our organization prides itself on self-respect and standing up for what you believe in, and you embody that. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. We'll talk one day. As far as you're concerned, Jennifer, consider this the end of our working relationship. Mr. Bradley... I'm speaking to you at all is because you seem like nice kids. I, I just, no, listen, no. Enough. I haven't got time for this. I've got to get to work.